Hey guys! This week's video is going to be about 10 things that I did not expect after I went tiny. A lot of these things are not going to be things that are going to apply to your tiny house or your life. Let's get started. I'm gonna say number one is going to be did not expect to not continue my exercising. In my old apartment, I used to exercise every single day. Maybe more so towards the end of my apartment living because it was a new lifestyle that I chose to take on. I would wake up at six o'clock in the morning and then do my exercises for an hour. I would do this every single morning and then I would continue my routine and eat a healthy breakfast, take my pills, do all the things that I usually do in the morning. When I moved to my tiny house, this is something that I did not expect to not happen. I have not exercised yet. Once for like 10 minutes to figure out if I was gonna, if it was gonna be able to work in the kitchen area, if I was gonna have enough room. It was so out of sorts that I've just not, I just haven't done it. So I've been living in this tiny house for about five months and I have not gone back to exercising and that's something that I didn't expect. Life happens and a bunch of other stuff happens. That's just something that's been put on the back burner. Number two, I used to oil pull every day. Oil pulling is a process where you take some oil and swish it around in your mouth like I'm doing right there. You take this oil in your mouth and you, you don't gurgle it or gargle it or anything, but you pull it through your teeth and you, you pull through your teeth and in and out and in and out 15 minutes on an empty stomach but that's when I was usually doing it in the morning, right, went right when I woke up and before I exercised. But that is something that I stopped doing when I moved into this tiny house. Oil pulling is actually the process of pulling this stuff through your teeth and it gets out anything. Cavities, bacteria, germs, mouth sores, um, even pulls out like stuff out of your sinuses, out of your throat, everything. From the day that I started that to now, uh, each year I no longer have any cavities. Number three on my list of things I didn't expect would be my diet change. I moved into this tiny house as a vegetarian. I got into this tiny house and I was doing the vegetarian diet and stuff, but again, bad influences around the campground and my own discipline, which I didn't have any, made me crave the meat that everyone was eating. We have poker runs in the campground where we'd go on a golf cart and go to like these certain spots to get your poker card and your, your chips and stuff. And each of the stations was selling meat items. It's just hard to move somewhere new and acclimate yourself to everybody else's lifestyle. Lo and behold, I am no longer a vegetarian. For some reason, it's just a lot easier to not have to do all the research and deal with, am I gonna have to bring a meatless dish for myself? Is anybody not gonna eat my meal because it's not doesn't have meat in it? I don't drink pop. I still won't do McDonald's. Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell, White Castle, no, 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 no more, not for me. One of the reasons why I stopped eating meat was for health reasons. I had a 33 millimeter nodule um, on my thyroid. One month after not eating meat and seafood is when it went away. So then I thought, oh my gosh, like this was the whole reason why I had the thyroid nodule, so I'm just gonna stop eating meat. Just a twist. I haven't eaten seafood since, and I don't think I am, and I'm wondering if the seafood food is part of the reason why this is not um, back yet. I'm constantly eating at the restaurant. Say, and still on number three, I started eating candy again. Part of the problem is I didn't have self-discipline. I could have said no, um, but it's one thing I didn't expect to start happening again. Number four, I stopped taking my pills and my tinctures. I was on social security disability for about a good 10 years. All of my prescription medications, I kind of, I, I was on like eight different ones and I stopped six of them just to get off all of the poisons and toxins that Western medicine puts in their pills. So I switched to natural pills, uh, supplements, and my tinctures and the stuff that I make for my business. I also used to take uh, these things right here which are tinctures and these tinctures I used to put in these little paint things right here um, and I used to fill them up a little bit and with water and then put the the dropper of each of my tinctures that I used in each of those um, little paint containers. I would put them in the refrigerator in the egg carton spot. 
So that's what I used to do in my old house and I started doing it again in this house, but it got away from me. Number five, I was not expecting to not be prepared if my electric was to go out. The campground's electric went out and like some of the surrounding area, I did not have any heat. I did not have any lights. And the worst part of all, my <laughs> compost toilet vent stopped working because I had no electric. It was disgusting. I didn't prepare for it. To prepare for it when it happens again, I purchased a backup heat source. Got like a propane tank with the Mr. Buddy heater to put on top of it. Since the power has gone out twice now, I'll just keep it as a backup. Hopefully I'll learn from that. Number six. I was not expecting for my water reclamation system that I purchased from the builder to completely it didn't stop working, it just doesn't, it never worked correctly. It um, almost always had floaties in it. It flooded my bathroom once. I needed new pumps. I needed to change the filters way too often, every two to three weeks. I've had pumps replaced, boxes, electrical boxes that were installed improperly. I've had to have those replaced. I've had to have a pressure release valve put in because we didn't know where it was. There was no manual to the water systems. A plumber didn't even really know what was going on. It's been a whole lot better using the campground water just because, uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting it to go out. And when it did, I didn't know really what to do. Number seven, when I got into this campground, I wasn't expecting to need a new set of wheels, a golf cart. There are over, I think, 320 sites in this campground. And I've got some friends here, so if I wanted to go somewhere, and it's cold, I'm gonna have to walk or get in my car. I didn't expect to have to invest in a golf cart, but I did. An old friend gave it, gave me one for free. Here's my golf cart, and my friend and I are actually in the process of fixing it all up. We've completely put in a new engine, we put in a Briggs & Stratton engine, and it went from two miles per hour to now like 25 miles per hour. I'm so excited, I cannot wait to drive it in the spring and summer. Number eight, I did not expect for my couch bed storage to be practically not usable. Another builder problem, I it was supposed to be longer and only double fold out, but they made it shorter and then triple fold out, which made it completely not usable to me because I can't lay on it, I can't sit on it, um, there's no cushion that can fit on it, I'd have to get something custom made. What I'm going to do to remedy it is when I get to my new spot, put that thing outside on the deck, uh, use it for outside storage stuff, and then I'll get like an Ikea couch that's a little bit longer, that has a back to it, and that has armrests, and that has a cushion built into it, because I still need it to be utilized by my guests. I probably will not get a new one for the office because I don't sit in there to begin with. Number nine, I did not expect when I moved into my tiny house for the whole issue with the builder to happen. I did not know that I was not going to be able to count on my builder for fixing the mistakes. I had a good list of about 85 different things that happened on my tiny house and this was throughout the build, throughout the build, the design process, and living in it. I didn't expect to not have that help. They were really nice, the whole Incredible Tiny Homes team was really nice and it made you want to look past a lot of their mistakes. But then when I had some serious issues and I brought those things to my builder's attention and he kind of guilted me and ridiculed me for complaining about the mistakes rather than fixing them like I usually did, the friendly stuff went away, the treating you like family went away, all because I was putting down my foot and why I wanted my stuff fixed. The past couple days I have been in contact with Incredible Tiny Homes, but it was a completely different person that contacted me and she has been wonderful. Thank goodness ITH is finally following through with fixing the stuff. I don't want to speak too soon, but right now uh, we are in contact and 
working on a plan to fix the rest of the stuff. Last but not least is number 10. I wasn't expecting to find a lot more mistakes. When I left the warehouse, I was on maybe 50 mistakes and now I'm on a good 85 mistakes. As you live in your tiny house, you start to notice more things. Each of the mistakes that I find, I'm just gonna keep bringing it to the builder's attention and hopefully they will continue working with me. After my one year warranty, I hope not to find too many more mistakes, but I'll probably have to fix those on my own. It's on my list of things that I did not expect. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this video helped you. It's basically my personal experience of the things that I didn't expect after getting a tiny house. That said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please don't forget to subscribe below and hit that notification bell in order to receive more of my videos. See you guys in the next video! Inusable. Is that even a word? Inusable. I'm gonna have to figure that out. I'm gonna see if inusable is a word. Where's my phone? Oh, duh. I'm, <laughs> I'm taping on it. I was not expecting for my water reclamation system to, damn it, hold on.